Hello, I am Cosimo Della Santina and I'm going to present the work that we have done together with uh, Franco Angelin on the, a new kind of iterative learning control technique for non-square linear system that we call functional iterative learning control. So, first of all, iterative learning control, which is the motivation of that, and uh, the inspiration comes from looking to uh, humans and see how we are able to through repetition of a set of prototypical motions to practice uh, to learn to improve our performance and learn how to execute uh, complex tasks and this is not only for bas basketball but for a vast quite vast range of tasks so from a dynamical point of view or from a control point of view what we have is our usual input output uh, system and uh, the goal is to learn a control action such that the evolution is exactly the one that we desire this is uh, of course as we all know a quite complex problem because uh, we are trying to map two things uh, that lives in infinite dimensional spaces so which are general functions the way in which the linear iterative learning control literature deals with this issue is to look for, is to impose a, the, a discretization. That's what is very important here and will be important later is that this most often than not is discretization, not something inherent with the, how our uh, plant. So also typically this uh, frequency are much uh, lower than the frequency of the microcontroller. Uh, but it's something that we only do to simplify then our analysis. So on one hand, we, rest, we restrict our inputs to piecewise constant functions. And in terms of the output, you just look the output at the moment in which we have discontinuities on the inputs. So what you can do is that you can uh, you can look at your input and also the output in uh, uh, discrete time. So you have this whole evolution. You can identify uh, areas in which the task is repeated, and then uh, just look at them as if they were composed as to in another direction of time. That is the iteration time, and the learning process from iteration to iteration can then be described as a closed loop uh, controller, but in the iteration domain. And what you can prove is that under some condition, eventually, at the, after an infinite amount of iteration, you converge to a set of control actions such as the error, the tracking error, is exactly equal to zeros. But again, if we do a step back and we look at what happens in continuous time, uh, what we have is some piecewise constant control that generates zero error at those well-known points. The question that we asked ourselves is, uh, is this trick, this discretization trick, really needed in iterative learning control? And uh, so if we put together the, the kind of restriction that we have for this, for this general setting of iterative learning control is to restrict input to piecewise constant function, looking at what happens only at the input discontinuity points on the output. And the third one that I did not mention is that uh, focus on square systems, so same amount of inputs and outputs. What we propose in this work is to relax the first ones. As you, we will see, this will relax our constraints in, some, in terms of uh, uh, where to look for the outputs and in terms of uh, having or not a square system. So let's go back to our initial setting. And uh, as I said, we have in general a different no number of input and output. Of course, the challenging case is uh, more output to the inputs, but also the other way around works in this, in this framework. So what we do, instead of looking at piecewise constant functions in time, for the input, we look at generic combinations of uh, a set of basis functions that are, uh, in general, could be whatever. So a set of m multiplied by o uh, functions as input domain. And as output, uh, this is where the, the second relaxation come in. We just uh, look at what happens at uh, all generic points in time that does not need necessarily to be uh, imposed or by, by how the, the input is defined. And this is uh, the this, uh, functional ELC framework, how it looks like. Um, and uh, what we have here is uh, this combination action. So uh, we have on the left our base function that are linearly combined uh, with respect to some set of gains alpha. And then we have on the output the selection, the selection operation. So we just look what happens at these times, but this time could be whatever time we like. And uh, the interesting thing is that what we show in this paper is that 
you can recast this whole model to much more general things in a, with a, in a framework which is almost identical to the one of the classical linear iterative learning control. But what we are doing here is to learn in this weight space instead of learning in terms of just of the amplitude of these uh, piecewise constant uh, uh, functions. And the learning rule is the one that you can see here. And you can see here this convergency condition, which is quite a quite standard one. You have this H matrix up here that you can see here in seven that depends on the dynamics of the system and your choice of basis function. But apart from that, it's very similar. And this means that we can easily port techniques for learning piecewise constant functions into learning the gains, the, the weights of this, uh, of this general function in this FLC framework. For example, we can follow a LQR ELC and, we can, and this is what, what, what happens, what you get. This L is going to be a kind of dumped cell inverse of uh, our H matrix. But let's consider an example. So it's a, this is a set of masses. So it can be considered as, for example, a discretization of a continuum uh, mechanical system. So a set of masses connected with springs. And we have a single force, UJ, connected at, uh, applied at the end of the sequence of masses. So these are two N outputs. So we want to take as outputs the full state of the system. So we want to control what all the masses are doing in terms of positions and velocities with this only input. And we select as base functions, uh, Gaussian functions that are equally distributed just for the, this is just some, some random selections because we have these degrees of freedom which is selecting these base functions. And uh, this is what they look like when you have five masses. And we take as, as times 8, 17, and 20, where we want to control the whole state. And this is what, uh, what happens. You see on the, if you use the LQR with a medium size S, uh, dumping term S. Uh, so what will, will happen is that after a few iteration, it will converge to, uh, for all, for two, three, four, five masses, always will converge to pretty good uh, performance. And uh, the Black axes represent what we want, where the system want the system to go. So we want the system to go in three configurations at every time at zero velocity. So we kind of stretch the system and then we bring it back where it is, where it was at the beginning. And uh, at the end, the whole system will converge to this uh, to this uh, kind of strange uh, oscillatory uh, behavior. So we said that there is this degrees of very big degrees of freedom pi. Uh, but the a question, another question is, is there any general rule for selecting this pi? And uh, with, in which condition uh, I can find a pi such that the control, uh, the, the control admits a solution? So the thing is that uh, if uh, AB, if, if you apply, you implement some reachability, basic reachability analysis on AB, then you can always find these base functions as the one in this, uh, in this picture and in this, in this slide. And, um, if you use them, then you will obtain a function, a matrix A, which is block lower diagonal and strictly positive, which is which are both very important uh, uh, property, but strictly positive also implies that it's full rank, which is what you really need, at the very minimum that you really need from this matrix. So uh, these are the kind of functions that you get uh, by applying these methods. You see that you have these, uh, these um, a small issue that comes out that they are not continuum in general. So they are going to be non-zero only in uh, each, each one in between the two sampling times, but they're going to have this, uh, this uh, strange general evolution. Uh, using these, uh, these, you can use them in, uh, in this different set, in a similar setting. You can see here how this evolution looks like uh, if you apply them. But uh, what, what is nice is that uh, you can go up much more in terms of amount of masses uh, that for which this controller will work. And uh, the, you can see that this whole thing converges for up to seven masses. Again, 14 outputs, just one degree of freedom, one degree of actuation. But even more, what you can do is that you can embed some uh, constraints, some, con some constraints on the control directly in the selection of pi. And we present only an example of that of the paper, which is to um, implement intermittent control. Uh, these results in a, similar, uh, in a similar structure as before, but this time 
which is uh, different than zero only in, uh, in the desired interval. And to showcase uh, what, uh, what this means, we consider basketball environment to go back to the initial motivation in the wind, under a strong wind, under gravity. And uh, we want to learn how to uh, do uh, three, uh, three juggle and then a shoot to, uh, to a position at a precise time. But we can do that only when we have our ball, the ball in our hands. So it, we cannot follow the ball while it goes up and down. And so we have to use some intermediate control strategy to do that. And this is uh, where, where it converges after only eight iterations. This is the, uh, the control action that it converges to when uh, you can see the evolution in Cartesian coordinate of the ball. So to conclude, in this paper, we make a first step towards uh, introducing a, uh, an extension of uh, iterative learning control, of linear iterative learning control that we call uh, FILC, uh, Functional Iterative Learning Control, which is uh, about learning control action into functional space rather than assuming that uh, we are only access to this wise content variable and uh, cause and function, this allows has to look to generalize the kind of uh, output functions that we want to, to track and to deal with uh, possibly highly non-square non, uh, non linear systems, so much more output than inputs, or in general to decouple the number of output than inputs, and also to impose some specific characteristics to the resulting control action that, uh, that we like better. It could also be in terms of uh, how smooth it is or or we want maybe to, uh, to have much of the control action at the beginning rather than at the end. So you can embed all these things into the choice of your pi functions. Thanks a lot for attending this talk. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have uh, now after, after the talk into the main conference, but anytime you want by just dropping an email to this email address. You can also look at my website to find more information about these and other works and a way to get in contact with me. Have a nice day.